going to try and make this quick as I have a lot to say and only 10 minutes by YouTube standards to say it. Um, I had my biomaterials exam today and my nano exam yesterday. They both went roughly the same. There were massive bits where I just couldn't answer the questions and massive bits where I thought I did quite well. So, yeah. Um, the exam protocol for materials is a bit different to any other department. We have them in our department and all of the invigilators are PhD students and things in our, like, doing materials. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought now. Okay, yeah, all the invigilators are materials PhD people, basically. Um, so it all feels quite relaxed and cheerful and um, I've gone into, the, into both exams being a bit like, this isn't an exam, this is more like a massive chill out with all my friends in a quiet room. Um, so that hasn't been very good. Tom, stop <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my exam stress has been very low, which I'm really happy about, apart from I have no incentive to now start revision again for my next lot of exams, which are in three weeks. I have instead been doing a large variety of other leisure activities. Um, although one of them is not exactly a leisure activity, but is very valid for this blog, as it's student living. Now, I've been going on about wanting to move house, and we've signed this flat, and all that stuff, and people may be a bit confused as to why exactly we want to leave this house so badly. Now, Hannah had to put this sign on our toilet today. Hang on. And it says, in case you can't read, do not use toilet, serious leak, which sounds rather alarming, and it is quite alarming, because what was happening was basically you were flushing the loo, and a load of water was ending up on your foot from the, like, the thing where the cistern connects to the, the white bowl thing that you sit on. <laughs> I don't know what that's called. <laughs> um, and I text our landlord before I, before I, um, before we went home for Easter, and he never replied to me. And then Maddie texted him today, and within like a couple of hours, he'd turned up and fixed it. So I feel he has some problem with me. I don't really, but so anyway, yes, that's one of the joys of living in a student house, which is a load of rubbish. Um, we also had to go to the bank to set up a joint account today because the new flat the rent will only come out in one standing order, whereas at the moment, like, the rent is made up by portions coming out of each of our bank accounts. So we went to Barclays, which is the bank that I currently bank with, um, just because it was near, and I've never had any problems with them, and we thought they were all right. So off we went, and we, um, we got met by this guy called Edward, and I only remember that because he had funny hair, and I thought of making a joke that he was trying to make himself look like Edward from the Twilight series, but then I decided that that would be inappropriate, because he was really dull, and just the most unhelpful, useless person I've ever met in my life. Uh, we had to sit there for about half an hour while he worked out our income and expenditure, and he, he got lots of things wrong. For example, he decided that Tom is a girl. <laughs> And he also decided that Tom is separated and not, in fact, a student. Um, and apparently Tom's mum is also... What was the word? Was she just single or divorced? Yeah. Uh, anyway, Tom's mum wasn't married, which is clearly not true. So, um, and, and I then said to him, please will you change the address on my current account to the London one, because any post for the new account will go to Devon and I won't get it until I go back, which won't be till July, probably. So, yeah, anyway, I'm, this is turning into a r long, boring story. It's not that interesting. It's just be careful with banks, because they can be real idiots. Okay, next leisure activity, Phantom of the Opera. We've just got back, and it was amazing. There were some really, really cool bits. Um, I've seen the film, and I know the film soundtrack off by heart. I am that cool. And I also have the, um, the music, which you can probably see on the keyboard over there. Well, it's not exactly up, but anyway. Um, so Tom and I had a little sing-along the other night while Tom was playing piano and I was singing. Um, and it was all just much better than everything that I've just talked about. Like, the special effects were amazing. There was one bit where he jumped down from, like, a railing and just disappeared into nowhere. Um, 
and yeah so that was really good and I have a blog post coming up which I have already written and I just wanted to go to this before I posted it which is from my things to do in London series which is about theatre and you should definitely go at least once while you're here because it's a chance you should not miss. Um, okay, the other thing I've been doing is reading this book, which is um, Douglas Adams, who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, went on a thing around the world with this guy, um, where they basically looked at animals that are becoming extinct. And that was 20 years ago, and Stephen Fry repeated the journey. I'm not entirely sure when. But there was a passage which I found really hilarious, and I wanted to share it with people. Um, okay, they're talking about the Amazonian manatee, um, and it's Mark Carwardine talking, or writing, and he says, right, I was instructed to hang on to his tail in case he didn't like being weighed and measured, and was thrilled to be able to help. He farted. This was not your average laugh-it-off friend-in-the-pub kind of fart. It was a lengthy, ear-splitting, far-reaching fart. Stephen stepped back. At least he's not a meat-eater, he remarked, trying to be helpful and positive. Then he farted again. This time, it was a shockingly wet fart, which I felt hitting my shirt, dribbling down my shorts and then running down my leg. I glanced up, gasping for air. Stephen was standing on the far side of the tank. Um, blah, 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 blah. They carried the manatee somewhere. Watch your feet, Stephen called, helpfully, from behind a garden shed. I just thought that was quite funny. It's quite topical because uh, the other blogger, Chris, and I have been having a uh, discussion on Twitter as to who likes Stephen Fry the best. And I maintain it's me, but I'm very jealous because Stephen Fry follows Chris on Twitter. I'm just going to write down our Twitter addresses in case people are not able to look up the links. And don't ask me what Chris's is about because I don't know. Okay, so the top one is Chris, that's Xmas Rights, and this one is me, which is fairly self-explanatory. I've talked enough now, and I'm going to go. This has been a massive thing, which is half a celebration that I am done with exams for three weeks. Yay! I will probably... Ooh, severe camera wobble. <laughs> I will probably grace yourselves with my presence sometime soon. <laughs> Bye! a 10 ounce rump steak. I hope you're jealous. You're not very good at it. <laughs> I'm rubbish at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying it. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice.